All right, guys, let's see how with the help of uh, store and state in Angular, we can achieve easily some functionality, such as uh, uh, here in the demonstration, we are logging up on a user and you see how its permissions are changed. And this is a random user. And then we can log out the user and we're defaulting to the guest user. Uh, let's see how easy it is to be done this uh, via those paradigms. So inside of our code, first uh, let me mention that we're using a change detection strategy, which is set to on push. Um, and we do this because we don't want uh, to create too many unnecessary changes uh, when we are changing uh, uh, certain parts of the object. And this is very good technique uh, used to reduce the rendering and uh, update mechanism activation in Angular. Uh, so basically we are having um, uh, two interfaces, one is for the uh, state and one is uh, for our view model. In the user interface we are having the current user and we are storing its uh, permissions. So afterwards we are just creating one default state with those uh, zero permissions and user guests. And then um, we use another interface for our view model. Basically, the view model we're using inside of the component as an observable and we are subscribing to this uh, view model and we are showing up the view model on the screen. Inside of the view model, we're using the so-called facade pa pattern. So the goal is for the view model to expose only certain parts that we are concerned inside of the component. And let's take a look at the whole component. Uh, first, we are using behavior subject in order uh, to preserve uh, the last state the user is having. And then uh, we are uh, creating an observable of uh, this uh, uh, store uh, behavior subject. So this we are doing in order to be able to monitor the current state of the store. As you can see, they are both private. So the store and the state are private. So they cannot be modified uh, or read from within other components. And the interesting part is that uh, we are creating two different uh, new observables based on the current state. So we are just uh, uh, filtering the permissions in the first case for the permissions and the current user in the second case using the map operator. We use distinct until changed because we would like our final user observable to be changed only if uh, the user property inside of the state object changes. Uh, in other cases, uh, we don't want uh, to touch this observable and to emit new values. Next comes the main part of the view model. Basically, it's again one observable where we are combining uh, the latest values of those two uh, created observables of our state. And we are using array destructuring uh, in order to create then an object. And this object will be uh, the final value of this observable and it will be emitted. What is the point of this construction here? Uh, we create this long construction here in order for whenever any one of those uh, two observables emit a value, it to be transformed uh, to a new object, so a compound object, uh, and this object will be uh, sent uh, as an update to our view model. So afterwards, uh, this view model, we can use uh, certain parts of it, uh, such as vm.user, and uh, vm.permissions. Uh, in this way, we are facilitating our subscription. We are just subscribing to one observable in the beginning, and then um, in our component, we can use uh, different parts of this uh, view model. And now let's take a look at how we can change the data inside of our uh, state. We know that uh, the state is connected with a store. So we have the following update state uh, uh, function, which accepts uh, an user state and uh, just uses uh, the store.next method, since it's a behavior subject to propagate the passed in uh, value. So by using uh, .next method, all the subscribed observables will receive uh, notifications from this subject and uh, they'll be updated. So our um, view will be uh, refreshed accordingly. And uh, one more thing that we are doing that we are updating the internal state object we're updating it uh, in order to have the latest version of the state of the user. And then let's see how we can use this uh, function update state. Uh, we have created login user and logout user functions, which are activated here by clicking of the buttons. 
and uh, actually we are generating one uh, random user here and we're giving uh, permissions set to one when we are logging the user and then we are just updating the state by using this function we're passing the old value of the state and uh, we are passing the new values of the user and the permissions we just created and uh, this will create one completely new object which will be passed to the update state and propagated to all the subscribers for the logout we are just setting the permissions to zero and uh, we are grabbing the default parameter as a guest uh, here and passing everything to the update state so this effectively logs out our user and uh, that's how this uh, component functions all right guys i hope you enjoyed the information and you can find uh, useful ways to uh, use this uh, pattern and uh, those techniques inside of your code if you like the tutorial you can subscribe to the channel